So I'm stewarding my vision now as a single person when talk it comes about to my it. finances. I'm maximizing my single season. So when I do get married, I ha I've laid down the right foundation to where me and my wife, every quarter for the first year, we can go on a honeymoon. We can keep the spark there. We can keep it fresh there. And then my goal is, depending on what her situation is, what her career field is, that's once a quarter. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we go somewhere. Yeah. And then once a month, her and I just do a staycation somewhere. We Good. drive over to this city. We drive over to that state. And we look at this for a weekend, try to really do something and create a different kind of culture for my family. Mm. But I can't do that. Yeah. If I sit here and say yes to her, if I sit here and spend $500 on this date, yeah. $300 on that date and go buy this and go buy that just to impress and to blend in with culture. And I'm not really maximizing stewarding this single, single season with my finance. I am on a journey to discover, uncover and recover love. Life is about helping others. Dear future wifey has been doing exactly that. You stated that women are to present and not to pursue. It has given us a, a roadmap on how relationships were meant to be by God. There are still black men who love the Lord and their end goal is marriage. Thank you for teaching me how to stay lit, how to be intentional and transparent. You read your, your letter. I cried. I just got married two months ago, and I'm listening to the podcast so I can stay married. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield, and this is season four, These Dating Streets, on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I'm your host, Lateris R. Whitfield. Listen, we are on the road to hit 100K subscribers. And my boy on the podcast today said he's going to do everything in his power to make that happen. So if you're still shacking up with us, come on, what are you doing? We're in season four. Go ahead, make a commitment and subscribe. I'm so excited to have this guest on the podcast because one thing I love about him is that he keeps it lit. Y'all know the mantra of the podcast is lit, living intentionally and transparently. And I love listening or watching or reading some of the posts that he makes and uh, how many people are triggered by some of the posts he make. I love it. I love it. So I love talking to brothers that keep it real. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My homie, Anthony O'Neill. Man, hey, yo. Man, what's up, bro? You good? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Man, man, listen, I've been looking forward to this. Like, it's been about a it's been about a year. A year, because we used to be in Clubhouse all the yeah. time, talking in groups or whatever, and, yeah. and uh giving these women a lot of gems dropping it or whatnot Absolutely. and so you and i first met on clubhouse yeah, and yeah. so now i have you on the dear future wifey podcast yeah. so without further ado i want your way in and your buy-in we're gonna keep it lit right oh, let's do it okay we're gonna keep it lit so today's episode because i have you mm -hmm. it would be a disservice not to have something around finances okay. so today's episode is going to be titled romance with no finance uh oh, uh oh! I think we got him. I think we got him, Coach Rihanna. I think we got him. So I believe that you Can you have romance without finance. I don't know. We're gonna talk about it because we 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 talk about how most marriages end in divorce, and it's not infidelity. Right, right, right. It's finances. Right. So I want to know, you know, and your whole platform. Let me say this first. You made a post one day last year that said that. On the first date, you don't spend more than fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo, why, 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 why? Listen, listen man, you know, I, you know, it's a new year. It's okay, twenty twenty two. I've I've upgraded myself. You gonna say fifty five dollars? You know, I, no, I went to hundred. Oh, you went to hundred? Okay, but I still my budget is still fifty to one hundred. And really, to keep it real, Terrence, it's like I don't really focus on the amount of money on the very first date. Okay. Right? And, and, and here's why it's because spending money for me, spending money for you and a woman, that's easy. That's easy. You know, but how do I put effort into the first date? How do I show her? I've listened to what you've said on the phone. Mm. I've taken notes to the conversations that we've had. And how do I take that information and, and, and develop something, do something that shows her my intent that shows her my effort, but it doesn't cost me a whole lot of money. So that's just for me. Right. But, no, then, when good, we, but when we flip it, the majority of the people who are watching us right now, the brothers, they don't need to be spending two hundred, three hundred thousand, uh, two hundred dollars on the first date. You know why? Because they don't, they're not making the money to actually go out there and do that. Why are you spending two hundred dollars to go out on a date when you don't have two hundred dollars in your savings account? <laughs> like, like you, you spend this money to impress her. She, she's not impressed. She's gone. Now you short. 
money in your savings <laughs> account because you're trying to impress her. So for me, it's like, man, listen, uh, it's all about the foundation. It's all about, you know, the responsibilities. A man should know how to stand on his own two feet and say, you know what, queen? Um, I'm going I'm to treat you like a queen. I'm going to respect you. I'm going to honor you. Uh, but this is not in my budget. And, and and not don't be ashamed to say this is not in my budget because the right one would be like yo cool great let's get creative the wrong one would be like oh no mm -mm, no 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 but but hey yo but that's kind of hard for you to to play that game when they know you got money so when you say budget a lot of people think i don't i can't afford it right right, right. but you're saying it's not in my budget because you've allocated in your dating budget that right. i won't spend x amount of money so how do you not come off as being cheap because you say it's not in my budget and they like bro you just pulled up in two foreign cars uh you know like how 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 is that possible well here's my thing and here's how i break it down right because you're right the word budget is like a a turn off word for a lot of people and so this is what i do i just tell them hey, i can't afford that right now because it doesn't align with my vision so for me it's all about what's the vision for my life and where am i going and do you align with that vision and just because I say I can't afford it doesn't mean I financially can't afford it. No, I can't afford to say yes to you, say yes to her, <laughs> say yes to them, say yes to that, and then turn around and say no to my future wife because I told everyone else yes. I told my girlfriend yes. I told my boys yes. I told yeah. the world yes. Then when I find the love of my life, my best thing, because I wasn't stewarding my vision well with my money, now I got to tell my wife, no, we can't get that house that we need. No, we can't have the hundred moon that we want no we can't have the marriage that we want because i said yes to everyone else but i gotta say no to you i'm sorry which reminds me of a very powerful post that you made do you know where i'm going with it uh -uh. you made a post that said similar to what you're just saying now but talked about how many vacations you'll be going on with your wife yes sir and you said the sacrifices that i'm making right now of telling these other women only having this 50 dollars budget mm -hmm. quote unquote that i want to take do you really want to take a vacation with your wife every quarter absolutely man and here's why and here's where that comes from you know i have four loving parents two biological parents two step parents so my dad and my stepmom live in columbia south carolina then my mom and stepdad um, and my siblings live in um, California, uh, San Diego, California. My, and I call them, I call all four of them parents. I hate Good. the term step because they all love me equally and I love them all equally. Good. So my parents in California, right, never had a wedding, never had a honeymoon, never took us on vacations. I've watched my mom work three jobs mm. just so her kids can have a decent Christmas. Not an amazing Christmas, not this, oh my gosh. No, I'm talking about we get some decent gifts. We got one game that went towards all of us. Yep, yep, been there. And so for me, it was like, I've never been to Disney World. Um, me neither. I, on, on, when I was young, we never went to Hawaii. We never went out of the country for spring break. And, and when I had the opportunity of serving on, on the Ramsey team, man, I was looking at some of the leaders of the company taking their kids on spring break to Israel, to London, to Paris. And I'm like, what in the world is going on here? And, and so I'm like, wait. So I literally went back to my vision and said, you know what? Dear future wifey, mm -hmm. you will have a wedding. Yeah, you will have a honeymoon that will be at least one month long. We're going to two different vacations, and, and I think for me, it's 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 all about how do I provide something different. So I'm stewarding my vision now as a single person. When Talk it comes about to my it. finances. I'm maximizing my single season. So when I do get married, I ha I've laid down the right foundation to where me and my wife every quarter for the first year we can go on a honeymoon. We can keep the spark there. We can keep it fresh there. And then my goal is depending on what her situation is, what her career field is. That's once a quarter so friday saturday sunday monday we go somewhere yeah and then once a month her and i just do a staycation somewhere we Good. drive over to this city we drive over to that state and we look at this for a weekend try to really do something and create a different kind of culture for my family mm. but i can't do that with yeah if i sit here and say yes to her if i sit here and spend 500 dollars on this day yeah 300 dollars on that date and go buy this and go buy that just to impress and to blend in with culture and I'm not really maximizing stewarding this single, single season with my finances. See, when people have powerful thoughts like you just articulated, I always wonder where did that come from? Were you the opposite at a point in your life? Absolutely. Okay, so talk about that. At what point did that shift? Did you, did you find yourself investing all these financial resources into the wrong person? Absolutely. And you ended up like, 
Bro, I was homeless at the age of 18, 18 and a half. Man, I graduated high school because I grew up in a very strong, strict Christian faith home. I grew up a, a Kojic, Kojic kid, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We in church every day. You know, I couldn't go to the school dances because my dad was like, you're not going to bring that spirit back home to my <laughs> yeah, house. Yeah. You know, if I yeah. had R&B music, if I snuck it into the house, my dad would find it, trash it, put it on my bed. And like, yo, I told you, none of this <laughs> crap in my house. And so growing up, man, we had two important conversations. The very first conversation was, hey, here's what you do as a young black man if you get pulled over by the police. Cool, yep. great. Second conversation is, hey, here's how you get into heaven and not go to hell. The only conversation I had around money was if you get $100, get 10, 10, 10 of it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other $90, just, you know, don't ask us for school supplies because you got it, <laughs> you know? And so when I graduated high school, man, and I, and I go off on the college campus, bro, can you only imagine what this fresh piece of meat is thinking about on the college campus, seeing all these beautiful ladies? I wasn't thinking about stewarding my money. I wasn't thinking about saving my money. I was thinking about what do I have to do, one, to get her Two, to be accepted by the brothers. And three, just to be a popular young kid. And yeah. everything was based around money. Mm. Everything was how much money do you have? What yep. kind of car do you drive? You know, do you have back then in the early 2000s and late 90s was, yo, do you have a 60-inch floor TV uh, that yeah. sits on the floor? <laughs> you know, are you at, you know, Aaron's sales and lease and getting, do you have oh, the yeah. couches? Aaron's, you know? boy. Aaron's on, had man. all our money. They didn't, got it, bro. With that crazy finance interest rate. Come on. <laughs> So when I graduated high school, I just turned 18. Before I even turned 19, I'm $35,000 in debt, kicked out of school. Me and my father in California get into it, and I'm homeless sleeping in the back back of my car, right? And so for a period of my life, I contemplated suicide. Mm. Um, um, I questioned, you know, if God was even real. And I was doing all that because of the poor decisions I made around life and around money. Mm. And so when you look at where I'm at today, it's not because, yo, I want to ball out. It's like, no. Growing up, I experienced life a different way, and I experienced life because of the lack of knowledge. Yes. And so now that I have the knowledge and the wisdom on how to really steward this season that I'm in, man, listen, I don't care if people laugh at me. I don't care if people say, oh, he's dumb and or he he's frugal. Well, you can say whatever <laughs> you want to say. But I do, people who talk to me like that, I want to look at their bank account. I want, to, about, I want to look at what, what, where, where are you at financially? Yeah. Uh, because I, you're not paying my bills. Exactly. When I get married, I can't tell them, well, she said, I should, <laughs> well, babe, he said, no, I, I got to be a man and be like, yo, laugh at me now because yeah. my wife, she will see. And here's, here's the thing about me, and ladies are going to get offended when I say this, brother. I'm going to get some heat right here. A real woman sees the fruit and the potential of that man. Mm -hmm. So a real woman would see me saying no today, but see that as a yes tomorrow. <sighs> Let me tell you something, bro. Do you know Kaylin and Kyra? This They're young YouTubers. They're 24 yeah, 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 years yeah, yeah, yeah. old. Yeah, Christian yeah, yeah. couple. Yeah, yeah. He's exactly the same way. Ooh. And I need he, to get them on my show. Oh, you got oh, you gotta get them. I'm gonna call them when we leave. Have they been on your show? Yes. They were on my think, show. They live here. I think that's where I first found out about them. Let me tell you something. These young this these young couple, 24 years old, yeah. he made his first million at 20 on YouTube. On YouTube. On YouTube. And he were said, they married? They were they were dating, and then he said, listen. I date with intentionality. If you're not my wife, I want to. He said, "I want to marry you. Mm -hmm. If you ain't about that life, then move out the way so the real one can come." When mm -hmm. I say he handles stuff like a G, mm -hmm. but he grew up in a, in a in a Christian home. Dad's a pastor and all that, so he was very intentional at a young age. Mm -hmm. He took all his money, kept saving it, kept mm -hmm. saving all his Google AdSense money, and just kept building up into account. Wow. Said, "I'm gonna marry her." They start doing videos together and all that. He was just stack stacking the money, stacking the money. And then they got married, didn't have an expensive marriage. I mean, didn't have an expensive wedding. Listen, bro, I'm not having an expensive wedding. The hey, most I'm spending on my wedding, bro, I'm going to say it right here. Say it. 10 grand. What you going to do? What you going to do with 10 grand? How, how you going to do it? I don't know. I'm going to let her figure it out. <laughs> you going to let her figure it out? Because the thing is, man, I think here's the, here's the truth. Ooh, uh -oh, I'm going to uh -oh. upset some ladies. Uh -oh, I'm going to okay. upset them. Okay. Okay. Ladies get so excited about the wedding, but mm -hmm. not the marriage. That's true. They get so excited about spending money on the dress and having this and having that at their wedding and having this kind of food. But then we're not really focused on the marriage. My focus is on the honeymoon. You know why the honeymoon? Why? Because I'm going to have a lot of sex. 100% better be. And then two, we're, we're going to do a lot of dreaming and a lot of vision casting for our 
uh, our not wedding, our marriage. Mm -hmm. And so I'm excited about the wedding. I really am because I really want to celebrate it. But listen, man, half of the people who I know ain't coming to the wedding. <laughs> because here, here, here's the truth. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. Hey, yo, you been getting in trouble. You got, oh, but, go ahead, go but, ahead. But here's the truth. Go, bro, go and like, dig a little deeper. You're already there now. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it because I'm, think, I'm thinking about money. Why am I paying you to come celebrate my and you're going to be paying $80, $90 a plate Why? for me to sit there and eat. Why? Because it's celebration, A.O. Okay, cool, you great. know, it's, it's a chance to, you know, do, all right, would you throw a party? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, so if you were throwing a party, just a generic party, say you're going to celebrate hitting a million views on your YouTube channel, or not million views, a million subs, and you say, I'm going to throw a party, how much do you spend on that party? I mean, that's a different thing, though. Why? You're celebrating a union. I'm celebrating a, a, an, a, a huge accomplishment. So for me, when it comes to a union, that's more spiritual. So it was like, I want the people in the room to be praying for us. I want the people in the room to really be interceding and, and really saying, God, be over this. Because half of the people at the wedding don't care if you make it or not. They just want to say they were there. They, they were there. They just want to see what did she look like. They just want to see like if like no half of the people at the wedding ain't really coming to to really see you win. So for me, that's why I'm like, yo, you got ten grand, okay? Um, it's like I, we don't need. Don't so need hold on, wait, wait, what she got on money? She said, man, you ain't got to pay for the wedding. I'm paying for the wedding, well, and I'm finna drop a hundred a uh, hundred thousand dollars. What? She don't have her own money. She about to be my wife. Oh, talk about oh Jesus. Oh Jesus! Oh, <laughs> you know we, my we, money we is her money. Here. Her money is my money. And she said, "Okay, since we got money, since we got our money, right. this is what I would like to do with our money. I'm coming to the table, X amount of millions to the table. I want to spend a hundred thousand. I've been dreaming of this moment forever, and I've always wanted this this Cinderella wedding experience. Man. And I've and I've and I've waited all my life for you, Ao. And God bless me with you. You waited all your life for me. Yes, yes, I, yeah, yeah, yes, she did. Spend hundred thousand. Yes, yes, she did. She said. I I waited all my life for you, and I want to. I want all these people that have been praying for me to to meet a guy like you. I want them to be able to Ooh, partake in this experience. My family, my friends, friends. my line sisters, Your all line these they jealous of you. <laughs> well, I want them there because I want them to see me in this ten thousand dollar Vera Wayne dress. Because that ten thousand budget you're gonna give me, I'm gonna spend on my dress. Listen. That's all that's gonna buy, and I need them to come. And I have this whole decor. We're gonna spend about twenty thousand dollars on. on on floral arrangements and I know your eyes are getting big $20,000 on flowers yes that's what we're gonna do because I envisioned this my our, entire our, life our vision doesn't align <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be real it that doesn't align y'all done broke up y'all done broke up at the, at the planning stage y'all done called the wedding off but you know what though man <laughs> listen man I actually just came out with a, a mini uh, mini ebook right and it's called asking the hard questions while dating how to ask that's them. good and that's one of the questions that I think you should ask before you get yes. into a committed relationship what is your vision for marriage and wedding look like? yes and, and again I'm not trying to be the frugal guy I think for me we have to really start especially in the african-american black community we really got to start stretching our minds and we, we do so much I do agree with that now but we don't really think about the future. Tomorrow. Yeah. And it's like me, I'm so big on legacy. I'm so big on building something, me and my wife together that we own, that we can pass down to our kids. Listen, man, I'm going to be real. I've been to a lot of great weddings, but I don't remember them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I shoot a lot you, of them. That's what I do for a living. I shoot. I be like, why? I spent a lot of money on this. Right. And then I eat the food and then I go about you my business. You go about your business. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and, I, and, and, and what I do not want to do, and, and let me be real. So let me let me kind of backtrack. Ten grand is probably it probably is exaggerating. I think for me, what I'm simply trying to say is, if my wife is more excited about the wedding than the actual marriage in the union, we're we're not aligned. Well, well, I, I respect that. So that if she comes back to me and I know this is my wife and this this is it, she said, "Well, babe, I want to do about like 15, 20 grand." Okay, cool. As long as I can see that 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 there is something in there that is of value. Okay, cool. But if all we're talking about while she's dating is just that one day, <laughs> not the rest of our life, nah, bro, I can't do it, man. Because at the end of the day, man, I really- That's going to be the foundation of a lot more arguments later on. Because man. at the end of the day, she's going to say, I need this G-Wagon, and I need to buy this, and I need this purse, and I need to do this. And, and listen, I want my wife to have the G-Wagon, the Chanel purse. My wife will have it all. Okay. You know, she will. Don't get it twisted. But man, what foundation are we setting for our kids because the average african-american dies and leave what average african-american male dies and leaves his family with bills and benefits and the benefits are only enough 
um, to take care of half of the bills. And so for me, while I think while I'm in this mess, which is one of the reasons why I'm totally against debt. I don't do credit cards. I don't finance things because I, I want to pass down um, land. I want to pass down businesses. I want to leave an inheritance. But with all that, I also want to pass down the knowledge and the wisdom. That's good. Where my kids can flip it, man. That's good. I ain't want to go off on your show, but man. No, I want you going off because we we finna talk about some real stuff. When you talk about finances, yeah, yeah. In, a, in, in romantic situations, yeah. it needs to get real. You, you can't be playing games. You got to talk about it because at the end of the day, um, I had on uh, someone on my podcast in an earlier episode was talking about that a woman should always have money stashed aside that her husband don't know. What? And I said on my past, I said, hold on, no, nah, that's not, nah, hold on. Now you can't be operating like that. What? They was like, well, my mama always taught me this and that's how it should be. Your that a woman should wrong. always, I said, your mama is wrong. Why would you feel like you need a, a safety net of finances aside that your husband don't, why would you want to introduce deceit into your marriage? Why would you want to do that? How would you take that, A.O.? Don't ask me that question. I'm going to ask you, A.O., what would you do if you found out that your wife, that y'all, you've been transparent, she knows every dollar that comes in and every dollar that comes out, and then year two of your marriage, you found out that she had this other account stashed aside that you know nothing about, and she got $20,000 in it. We'll just say twenty. She got $20,000 stashed aside, and she said, well, this was in case whatever we got going on don't work out. That's stealing, bro. That is misleading your husband. Yes. Now, there's a difference between, like, for example, one thing I do teach when it comes to couples and finances is you have a primary checking account, you have a primary savings account, and then you have an extra primary savings account for, like, bigger purchases. But then you have two separate checking accounts yes. where, you know, hey, once we sit down and we go through the vision for our money for the month, hey, uh, bae, you can have $1,000 over yeah. here. Ayo, you can have $500 over here. Whatever right. that number is, yeah. cool, great. Now, if she has that money and she don't spend it and she got $25,000 over there. Then that's fine. Cool, great. Yeah. But if she got $25,000 over there and then she's over there doing something <laughs> on the side that I don't even know that's producing <laughs> income and she's taking all that income and putting that money behind <laughs> the side money. And I don't even know you even got this income coming in. Like so so what you're stealing from the legacy of the family. Yes. We could be investing that. We could be growing that. We yes. could be, you know, doing something with that money to grow. But what you're thinking about is if it don't work if out. If it don't work out. And my question would be, I want to cuss on your show. My question would be, <laughs> well, why in the heck are you married to me? That's what I was why, telling you. Why are you them? the mother of our kids? Ooh. If, if you think this union is not going to work, let's have that conversation. Yes. Rather than you hiding and just saying, ooh, ooh, let me just be prepared. <laughs> but again, bro, I get it why ladies think that way because I do I do believe if we come back to us on the flip side of it, yeah. we're not stepping up to the plate and being men. Right. We're getting married too early. We're not being faithful. We're not taking care of our families. We're not taking care of our responsibilities. So a part of that what, what our ladies are feeling is, well, if I had a real man, I wouldn't have to think about that. So we do have to address the head, the leader of the home first to make sure that he's doing things right. But in, if he is doing everything right, man, that woman right there, bro, she. And that's what I, and, and I, and I got some little debates and then some women DM me. They was like, you understand I was married before and the guy controlled the finances. And then when he left, I had nothing or whatever. And I was like, I understand you can't take a wrong and then take another wrong and right, think right. that's right. I right. said at the end of the day, y'all both should have known what the finances were. Y'all should have had real conversations where you're not controlled by the, the minute you say that he was controlling the finances, yeah. which lets me know that he didn't respect your input anyway. Yeah, so at the end of the day, y'all are married. Y'all both should be in alignment with how the finances uh, should go. And it shouldn't be like, I have to have this stash in case something don't work out. Right. I said, cause you're going to find out later that your husband got a stash cell phone that you don't know nothing about and i said and then they were like that's not the same thing i said deceit is deceit you may be deceiving him for money he's deceiving you with you he got a whole nother phone so so what's that well nah infidelity or whatever i said that's financial infidelity Ooh. the minute that you start they don't want to hear that. anyway Ooh. so as we, as we <laughs> <laughs> that's what goes on in my dms ao that's what goes on in my DM. They don't want to come to my DM with that, brother. I'm with them. What? What? Wait. So it's okay for you to cheat. Yeah, it's it's okay for you to cheat. But you upset when he. Oh, okay. I got you. It's not the same thing. I said, okay. Tomatoes, tomatoes. Yeah. At the end of the day. At the end of the day. So, Ayo, you're an eligible bachelor. You live. You live in DC, right? Live in DC. 
you ain't at a loss for women. I know that women, you have your pick of the litter. Can I assume that you have options? Yeah, I do. Okay. I do. So when you, when you look at a guy like you that's wise about finances, I ain't going to just say have financial literacy. You're wise with your finances. You're an attractive guy. Why are you single? Me. Yeah, you. Me. You. I'm single because of me. Why? Because of me. What's wrong with you? I wouldn't say nothing's wrong with me, man. I would definitely say that there was some pruning. Uh, there was some maturing. Good. Um, there was some seasons that I really needed to sit up underneath a wiser man, a wiser couple to really um, get some things out of me that my future wife will need. Mm. Um, you know, I have, yeah. So I mean, good. You know, I got the finances in, in line. I got a career in line. But man, I'll be honest on your show, bro. Um, I learned this last year. I was dating an amazing, an amazing lady. Uh, but I learned that I was selfish. You know, I learned that that there were some some immature things inside of me that I needed to grow out of. Good. And um, she helped expose that. And I literally just submitted myself to um, a, a a wiser individual, a very wise individual. If I said his name, everyone would know him. And still a great man and, and still could date, right? Because that issue is nothing compared to half of the other issues out there that ladies are dealing with. 100%. But it's like, for me, it's, I, I had to be real with myself. Like, hey, yo, you know that the average woman is, that who you marry is going to want to spend quality time with you. Bro, this is what I do for a living. I'm on the road. I'm, I'm helping people with their issues. I'm on YouTube. I got to keep my energy up. Yeah. And when I get off, I don't want to talk to nobody. So you, don't, you didn't have no time for the woman? Mm -mm. I don't want to talk to nobody. Um, and I was just like, yo, no, no. And, and, and there were some other things, too, that I just really had to just really check. And I think what makes a man a man is to identify and say, you know what? That sucks. This hurts. But, A.O., you got to fix that. Let me tell you, that's one thing I want to uh, applaud you at, applaud you for, King, is to have the self-awareness to be able to identify your idiosyncrasies and things that need to be healed. This whole podcast was birthed out of my pain, out of things that I got wrong wow. and said, you know what? I am going to create a podcast where I heal in front of the world Ooh. and I show people my scars hey. and say, this is who I am hey. and let them go on the journey of my healing as I get it right yeah. the next time. Yeah. And so I love what you're, what I love exactly what you just said because you, you didn't sugarcoat it. You said, I'm selfish. Yeah. That's what it is. Right. Um, did you, does the, does the woman know this awareness that you have? Did you ever have a conversation with her and say, you know what? You were right. I, I, I really was selfish. Um, to be honest, um, I think I tried to, we tried to have a conversation afterwards, um, and it, it didn't go the way that I thought it should have went. Um, so no. Mm -mm. Um, so and, she hears this would be the first time she heard you take accountability for it. I'm not, nah, not the first time because I, I talk about it on my show. Oh, okay. You, you know okay. What I mean, I, I, one thing I've learned about me is it's. I have no problem being honest and vulnerable in areas that I've completely healed from. Good. Now, where I'm still healing, where I'm still growing, I keep that. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like what I don't want to do is expose myself and then y'all see this. It's like, well, you just said. <laughs> you just said. Yeah, you yeah. Yeah. So, like, I'm so, working so through it now. It's a work in progress right, now. <laughs> right. So, you know. But I'm on I a 12-step program. <laughs> but I think for me, one thing I love to show other young black men is like, yo, it's okay to – to have some 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 flaws. It's okay to be immature in certain areas yes. of your life because all of us are immature in certain areas. One hundred percent. And all of us need that therapist, man. And so, um, you know, it, it last year earlier, um, um, man, it, it was rough. You know, it was rough on me because I had to accept that. Mm. I had to be like, yo, you need to grow up in this area because here's the truth, man. And, and, and I'll be honest. I've never said this anywhere. Success will make you overlook your flaws because you're successful over here. You got the blue check mark. You got this money coming in. You driving a car you want to drive. The ladies are looking at the outer success, but only you can see the inner 
issues that you have. But, and so for me, it's like what I've learned is like, man, Anthony, yo, dude, that sucks. That's ugly. But it's okay. It's cool. I mean, I'm driving a nice car. Yeah. I, you know, I, I got two, 300,000 people following me on IG. Yeah. I got the blue check mark. That's, they'll overlook that. Yeah. And literally my, my mentor said, and that's why God has not allowed you to settle down yet. Mm. Because the things that you think are, are small, they're big. And the things that I thought are small, she called out. Mm. And um, That's good. That's good, King. And I had to, I had to address it. And I'm like, let me do that. Um, and then another reason why I'm so single is because just recently I transitioned from uh, working with an amazing guy, uh, uh, Dave Ramsey. That's um, somebody, I, man, Ramsey I looked at him for years, uh, watch his stuff for years. He is a general um, in my space when it comes yeah. to finances. Um, such an honor to work with him for seven years. And when God transitioned me out of that, um, I really felt like the, this year, the first year of me stepping out on my own, I needed to really focus and build this business because I'll be honest, Latarius, I love hard. Mm-hmm. And and if I if I find a woman, do I, I she will be my priority, not my business. And I was just like, <sighs> I don't need that right now. And so because you know, I have people on my team, I have people on my staff, and I I gotta make sure that I build this thing. Uh, to the point to where now I'm I'm helping pay for other kids, um, school and other families living, and so I just want to make sure that um, I do is do this thing right. But I'm on a dear future wifey podcast because I do want a wife. I want a a best thing. I did Michelle Williams podcast the other day, man. And she said something so good. I, she said, uh, "What she say? She said, I'm single because you know I got everything." I I was like, yeah, yeah. She's like, but I'm single because I'm looking for a man who can give me more peace than the peace I already have. I was like, ooh. She said, don't bring me less peace. Don't bring me more drama. <laughs> you, you, you can't buy me the car. I already got the car. You know, you can't buy me the house. I already got the house. You know, I, I don't need you for the material things. I, I want peace. And I want more peace than what I already have. And I'm like, yo. I think that's what I'm naturally doing. The Bible says, he who finds a wife finds, finds a, a good great thing, thing right? and obtains favor, favor from the Lord. My problem was I was chasing. There well, it is. How, how, do I, how do I find something if I'm chasing it already? Talk about it. And so for me, what I'm doing is I'm stewarding this single season correctly. I'm focused on the vision that God has given me for my life and for my vision. And for my business, as I am on this road, I'm just going to find her there it is. right there or her right there. I'm not going to get off and go over here. I'm not going to get off and go back there. I'm just going to stay true to myself. I'm going to maximize and steward this single season correctly and just focus on the vision. And then, bro, I pray that, you know, um, God will put, not God, because, I mean, God could. I mean, some people believe God puts people together. Yeah. I, I, well, that's always a... Uh, I felt different ways at different points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause you gotta think about it. I've been married and divorced. Yeah. So if I thought that God brings you one person in your life, mm-hmm. then that means I screwed up. Then the other person's just to run up. You know I what I mean? So at the end of the day, that's terrible. I, I, I think God honors union. There, yes. If if the union is to serve and to build the kingdom, I think he will honor that union. Yes. I don't think he made her marry specifically him specifically for him. Yes. But I think he put her in the path and said, yo, choose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think you can choose whoever you want, but 100%. whoever you choose, that's who you need to be with. Yes. And if and if the union is pure and if the union has a good heart, I'll bless it. There it is. But that, I hate those deep spiritual people. Well, let me be quiet because some people are going to be watching this. No, they need to hear it. Because reality, we've talked about this. It's the literally... What we talk about on the Dear Future Wifey podcast is that if we sit around and we wait for God to bring us that one person, mm-hmm. and I've heard people say, I've fixated myself. This lady was on the live one day. She said, God showed me. I'm trying not to laugh. The lady said, God showed me this guy that was my husband. And I started asking. I started unpacking. I was like, okay, do you know him? She's like, no. I said, so Where'd you see him at? She said he was on a live. And I said, he was on a live. And she said, he's a he's a celebrity. I said, he's a celebrity. She said, yeah. And I said, have you have you have you spoke to him? She was like, no. And I said, 
So you were watching this celebrities live. God told you that this was your husband. How is that going to come about? She said, I don't know, but God is going to introduce us some way. Have you followed up with her? Uh, no, and I told her I want to follow up with her. That was in October. I said, I have to talk to you because I want to know, <laughs> Lord, help my unbelief. But I want to know how that comes about. Mm -hmm. Because I said, and I asked her, I said, so that, does that mean that any guy that you meet right now that really wants to date you, you say, no, God showed you who your husband is? And she was like, well, I haven't figured that out yet. And I said, <laughs> I said, you, you got to... <laughs> We got to be careful about some of the stuff that we be saying. I mean, she didn't really hear from God. I'm saying. Because you know, if you say God told you that, then you would say no to everything that comes in the way of getting to what God has given you. So, I mean, so you didn't really hear from God. You just saw him alive. You thought he was cute. You thought he was good looking. You said, oh, God. And you think that's God. No, that wasn't God. That that was you. And, and, and here's, here's the thing. Um, oh, I do believe that. I, well, I'll apply this. I, we can't say that God can't. And yes. will not say that that is your spouse because God knows all things. But I don't believe God specifically said, all right, Anthony, I designed you to marry specifically her. I think when God designed me, he knew who I was going to choose. There it is. And so it's like, you know, and I don't want to be too deep. because I know some of the spiritual people going to be in my DMs. Like, well, no, what about this scripture? Well, listen, listen, <laughs> listen, I respect their beliefs. But for me, I just feel as if. Man, God gave me the power of choice. And he did. He and and the reason why that's so confirmed is that he doesn't even make us choose him. No. So how am I gonna make you choose a human being, but I'm not gonna make you choose me? Right. He says, I give you the power to choose even me. Exactly. Bro, because I ain't trying to be spiritual, but I mean he gave Adam and Eve the choice to mm -hmm. choose to eat. That fruit. He sure did. He didn't put the, the tree and put it miles and miles and miles <laughs> down away from out of their sight and put a, a, fence, a fence around it. Oh, oh, oh. He said, listen, you can have all this. But don't you? Just don't do that one. <laughs> but you still have the choice to do that one. Yep. Not. So if he doesn't make us choose him, if he didn't make Adam and Eve um, not choose to eat the like what? Yeah. What makes you think? Why would he say, yo, you have to marry her to do this? I, I just don't. But I mean, back to your subject. <laughs> uh, no, bro. I, can you have romance with no finance? Can you? No. Why not? Can't. I don't believe in struggle love. That's what I want to talk about. So we call it struggle love. Yeah. So struggle love is, the, okay, I'll ask this. Does the finances have to be there at the beginning because struggle love is typically built out of you get two people um whether they're fresh out of college whether they're we're gonna we don't even talk about college because that, that when you when you're younger you're building your own Absolutely. life and you're yeah, building yeah. it and yeah. with the person we're talking about people in their late 30s uh mid to late 30s and you meet somebody and the guy is still trying to work out whatever he's trying to do financially, whether he's building the business, uh, the woman, she could have a job that's not earning a whole lot of money, but it's sustainable enough for her to cover her own bills. They get together, they live in whatever, let's say they live in an apartment together and they believe in each other and they're going to try to build each other up. That's what's considered struggle love is that not ain't got a lot of resources to, they may have one car and they're sharing that car. He drops off at work. He go run his errands, does what he got to do with whether he's an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur and then come pick up from work. That's considered struggle love because they're not comfortable in their finances to be able to live a comfortable lifestyle. Right. Comfortable lifestyle is, is, is important. Um, I'm married for two L's. Love and legacy. That's it. If you can love me all day long, but if we can't build legacy, we just can't work. I agree with that. Watch this, though. You can have all the money, and we can build a legacy, but if you don't love me, we can't work. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So I think for me, especially when we talk to the men. Now, ladies can get away in this financial subject, right? But I think from the men who, as a Christian, I do believe we are the foundation. We are the, the backbone. We are the head of our home. 
Now, listen, I'm not saying that ladies are below us because I do believe we have two different roles, but we're equally just as important. Facts. Right. So I want to be very, very clear. I'm not saying that a woman is behind, beneath, none of that. I'm just saying that we, we have two different roles in the family, but we're just we're both equally just as important to progress the family moving forward. And so when it comes to the finances, I do believe that men should have at least a stable foundation when it comes to the finances before marriage, I'm not saying they need to be extremely debt free and making a whole lot of money. No, what you got to look at is you got to look at their mindset. What is their what is their mindset around wealth building, debt elimination, legacy uh, building, generational wealth? Right. What is their mindset? And two, you got to look at their their labor and do you see fruit of their labor? Right. So a lot of guys talk a good talk. Hey, I'm gonna do this. We're gonna do that. We'll, but then you don't see any fruit. Of their labor, I tell people don't um, don't date potential. Mm. See, pr- see see them producing something. See see fruit of them working. Right. And so if 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 he doesn't have a whole lot of money today, but you see his vision, you see him working that vision, and you see fruit of that vision coming to pass. Example: I want to pay off all my debt. Okay, cool. Is he paying off his debt? Hey, I want to buy a house. Cool. Is he saving for a house? Who is he around? Is he listening to you know my podcast when it comes to money? Is he listening to the terrorist podcast when it comes to you know getting ready for the future wifey? Uh, but I do believe, and, and some people can get upset with this, because I watched my parents do the whole struggle of. I did, too. That's what I grew up in. They never got to the point to where they were 100% comfortable and they could do whatever they wanted to do until their kids left the house. Facts. And I do not want that from my black family. Facts. There's no way in the world, baby, I love you, and let's eat this cereal for dinner. <laughs> what the heck? You know what I'm saying? That's what I grew up on, boy. We was po, boy. We was eating breakfast for dinner. dinner. Bro, you had bread, you had milk, you yep. had eggs. Yeah, what is that? Eggs, eggs went a long soap. way. Eggs yeah. went long. Eggs went a long way, bro. I don't want that, bro. Me neither. I don't want that. I I don't and here's the thing. Growing up, I thought that was okay. Because we didn't know no better. We didn't know no better. So it's like for me, I'm like, well, well okay, cool. As long as we love each other. <laughs> when this girl told me, girl, how much money? I said, like five dollars. She's like, what I'm gonna do with five dollars? I said, girl, we can go to Burger King. You can have it your way. What you want to do? You know what I'm saying? But it's like, for her, it was like, no, I, I've seen more. Yes. Not Burger King, 99 Cent Whopper. And yeah. Like, no. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I had to retrain my mind on finances inside of a relationship. And then I messed up because then I started just dropping money on relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And then I realized, like, dang, I'm, I'm throwing away money. I mean, I remember one chick, no lie, no lie, six grand. In what period? In two months. Really? What bought was her, you buying? Bought her a Dooney and Burke's purse. Uh, took her to, in LA, took her to, um, I forgot the name of this um, spot, rented this um, suite, whole floor suite. It was like $1,200 <laughs> a night. We sat there for the whole weekend. Um, I had a Dooney and Burke's delivered to the, to the room. Dang. We did a room service. Every single day, and we woke up. I wasn't. I, I was saved, but I wasn't living the Christian. Oh come on, no, yeah, cool. I'm a, I'm a yeah. Um, what I, age were you during that time, balling like that? Man, I was right at right at about. Uh, yeah, I was right at my eighteen. I was right at eighteen before I went homeless. And you spent six thousand dollars when you was eighteen. Credit card though, not cash. Oh, I'm about to say, I'm like, how you get six thousand dollars? Credit years? cards, bro. Financing it. She thought she didn't care. <laughs> I rented a man, you know, back then that's when Mustangs are convertible. Yeah. Mustangs were really, yeah. really hot. I rented a convertible Mustang, picked her up from San Diego because she lived in San Diego. I lived in Oceanside and we drove up to LA. You was balling, boy. Balling. <laughs> Bro, I don't, I, I can't even remember her last name today. <laughs> like, like, I don't know who she is. Now, I know who she is, right? If I saw her, I, I I would remember her. But I don't I don't even know what she's doing with her life today. Yeah. I, I don't I don't see her on Facebook, Instagram. I don't see nowhere. And I'm like, dang, I spent six grand. <laughs> on somebody I don't even know their last name. And check this out. When I lost my job, I spent more than six grand because I had to pay the collection fees and interest yep. and all that type of stuff. Yep. And and so for me On one was, weekend. On one weekend. And of course we dated after that and I bought her like different things, sent her some roses, some flowers and stuff. Yeah. Like that. Um, but I mean, it's like, man, I've spent so much money trying to chase love when I didn't understand that there's a legacy piece to that. And and everything that I've spent, man, on all the ladies in the past, I'm like, dang. And I'm not saying don't spend money on ladies, bro. Of course. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is just be wise 
on how you do it and when you do it because you know your girl's here she's recording this you know the show for us i'm gonna say something she ain't gonna like it but some of these <laughs> ladies they are wise bro they know what to say they know how to look just to get you to spend some money on oh 100 we got game 100 percent. and yeah. really here's a game we don't really have like talk game <laughs> our game is money Yep. You know, we look if we look like we have money, then you're, you're gonna pull, you're gonna pull yeah. whatever you're gonna pull. Yeah, yeah. And a woman will some women will chase after you based upon what they believe that you can give to them. Which is why I'd be pissing them off because I'm telling them no fifty dollars to a hundred dollars. <laughs> Cause I'm not gonna leave with my money, man. That's easy. That's easy, baby. Here's the thing for me. If I give you time, you a winner. That's what that's <sighs> I value my time more than I actually value my money. When we talked about that the other day, I was just like, he gets it. Yep. He gets it. Because when you're as busy as we are, mm -hmm. to give somebody, I can cash out you $200 and it don't even bother me. It, it takes me two minutes to do that. But if I sit there and spend two hours talking to you, oh my I done st I'm in my mind saying, what am I giving up in this moment that I could be doing right now that can be producing the income or making good on a project that I'm working on that someone else has already paid me a few thousand dollars to complete. So if I'm talking to you like this, please find value in this conversation that I'm having. Ladies don't understand that. Man, I'm, some yeah, ladies. some would, some don't. But the ones that don't, they appreciate, well, the ones that really do, and they deal with guys that don't have a lot of time, mm -hmm. they value it when you spend time with yes. them, which is what gave you your aha moment in the past. And that was my fault. Yeah, that it's good. So I was telling her, I don't value you because I wasn't giving her time, thoughts, words, um, affection, emotions. When honestly, I did. I really liked her. Shoot, I loved her, but I couldn't. Show it. Couldn't show it. Couldn't show it because you were you were focused on your purpose. Yeah. yeah. I called you up back in uh, November, and I thought I had a great idea. I said, "Listen, I want you on the podcast." I said, "I would love to talk to you about because uh, I believe that people in their single season should be working on some things from a financial standpoint." And you said, "Latares, I already have a course that, that I'm coming out with." I was like, "You." You lying, bro. And I was like, I was like, man, I was going to try to encourage you to do something like that. And you was like, I already am working on that, bro. And I was like, tell me about it. Yeah, yeah. You have a dope course. And as you was telling me about it, I said, man, let me tell you something. This is what I'm saying that singles need in this season. This is how you maximize your single season. Yeah. And, and you was like, and that's the name of it pretty much. And you started talking <laughs> about stuff. And I was like, come on, man. It was so cool because I said that my season of singleness right now has to serve a purpose. Yeah. And it has to be that when my wife is introduced to me and we come into alignment that I did the work. I call it name the animals that mm. Adam had to name the animals before he was presented with Eve. Mm. And so you, you essentially created a course mm. that does exactly that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. T t man, talk about it, man. Very briefly, man. And I really want people to check it out, man. It's called the singles blueprint, right? And it's called the eight pillars to maximizing your single season. Yes. And I was sitting down with one of my mentors and he was like, man, the world knows you as the money guy, the Dave Ramsey, you know, money guy. He was like, man, but I know you as, as a guy who knows how to maximize his single season. Good. He was like, yeah, you, you've made some issues. You've made some mistakes. Yes. But man, every room you walked into, you've maximized that every failure you've, you've experienced, you've maximized it, man. You, you've taken the, the word maximizing and you've taken it to the next extreme. You see, this course is not about how do you pay off debt or how you get a man or how do you get a woman. This course is here are the, the eight pillars that you need to focus on right now to build a solid foundation so that way you can build that business. So that way you can build something on a solid foundation uh, when it comes to uh, income. This foundation, bro, is so crucial to me. This is how I got in Success Magazine. This is how I got onto the uh, OWN Network, onto the Tamron Halls, onto the, into the Ebony Magazines. Like This is how I built really my, my foundation. And check this out, I didn't even know it. Until I was sitting down with my mentor and he's like, yo, listen, you did this, you did that, you did this, you focus on that, you focus yes. on this. And he was like, and that's, he said, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing because it's one of the reasons why you're still single. <laughs> because you focus on these eight pillars <laughs> without giving room to grow. And, 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 and I love that because here's the thing, man. I like, I like what A.O. says. Man, 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 here's the thing, man. Here's the thing. 
I don't know why I like that. I'm going to get upset. When, <laughs> I'm, people can get upset when I say this. Especially, like, here's a question that bugs the heck out of me as a single man. Anthony, at 37, you're successful. Why are you not married? Yeah. What's wrong with you? Anthony, Anthony, you're 37. What, don't, don't you want kids? Mm-hmm. We, we tend to push single people to the ring. Yes. We tend to push people, single people, to having kids. When are we going to start pushing single people to maximizing their single season, growing their minds, getting to really know who they are at their core and building that solid oh, foundation? Wow. When are we going to start teaching single people how to get outside of their comfort zone? Because single people don't understand. Actually, a lot of people don't even understand that their comfort zone is the very same thing that is killing all their dreams, all their goals, killing them and preventing them from reaching all of their visions that God has given them because their comfort zone has become their kill zone. So when do we start really teaching single people why you do not have another responsibility talk about it here are the things you should be focusing on for yourself so when you do find that wife young man when that man does find you young woman when you do get into the marriage yeah the number one reason for divorces is because of money right but think about it if every single people maximize their single season and really focus on themselves money wouldn't be an issue anymore. at all at all it just wouldn't be because it's like now i built my mind yes where now i know going into the marriage okay cool this is what i'm doing and then two i'm, I'm gonna leave it here man because i really want them to get the course because i want to give them everything but it's like man i get so passionate about this yeah one of the reasons why i would definitely say i have been built a level of success is because i'm very clear on what's my vision talk about it that's why i can say I, i'm not going to spend more than a hundred dollars on the first day yeah and here's why it doesn't align with my vision and so single people don't even have a vision for themselves. And so in my course, I'm teaching them how to have a vision. Because when you have a vision, when you write a clear vision for yourself, that's your easy yes or no answer. If he comes into your life, if she mm. comes into your life, you don't have to figure out a way and just go. Well, I'm telling you, oh, I'm trying not to interrupt you, Ayo. <laughs> Gosh, I'm finna lose my mind right now. But I'm when serious, I tell bro. you that is what it's about. It is. That's how you can weed through. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go talk. No, because no, 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 you're getting me crunk. You just talk. I feel like I'm in church. I don't know if I'm supposed to throw a offering or something because that's my language it's so easy to shift through or sift through people that aren't in alignment with you easy. when you have a vision easy. you know what i'm saying it's like i use this example when i went into tiffany's i went and bought my daughter a necklace the year before last mm. and it was a it was a makeup gift i, I do these do-overs because it was this yeah. moment that i wasn't there for a couple of years ago because i was I had my attention on this chick that I was dealing with. Yeah. And I didn't have, that day wasn't a, a, around for my daughter and she needed me really bad. She was in college. Wow. So I said, the next year I said, I'm going to do a do-over. And I went and got her this Tiffany's necklace. Now I ain't never been in Tiffany before. Mm. So I walked in there and I said, um, I was asking about this, these necklaces. They showed me this T-Smile necklace. And um, I was like, oh, how much is that? Because it was real nice and dainty, but it was almost $1,000. I was like, God, this is... <laughs> okay, but I'm not for the little necklace. Now, what you what, now? What's so special about this necklace? Right, right. And so and so so they told me they was like, no. And I and I said, okay, do y'all have like, can I go sign up for your mailing list and get like a like like a <laughs> discount, discount or something? Because you know you be used to saying sign up here and yeah, get twenty yeah. percent off on your first purchase. Tiffany don't do that. Why? Because yeah. they got a clear vision. We Absolutely. don't do discounts. Absolutely. So then I was like, well, maybe. I was like trying to talk to her. I was trying to, hey, you know, this is for my daughter, this, and thinking that she may be able to say, oh, well, we have this at a discount. Something, some discount. And then she never offered that. And then I said, well, how would people even know that this is a Tiffany necklace? Like, if I'm going to spend this $1,000 on a necklace that no one will even acknowledge. Mm. She said, those that know Tiffany will nope. know it's Tiffany. And I said, all right, well, let me go. Let me go buy this. <laughs> and then my daughter at the bank, she said, "I felt so nice because now she she work at, he works at a bank, so people are walking through those people that know." Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's the latest collection of the yes. T smile. Yes, the Tiffany. She's like, oh, my daddy gave me this. My my father gave me this. It's uh, like that's a beautiful piece. Right. Tiffany has a clear vision yes. on their customer base because yes. I'm walking all walking in here like some ghetto dude talking about can I get a coupon or something you know yep. what I'm saying they yep. like maybe this isn't the place for you yeah, yeah. you know but they know that they know their customer and when you recognize that everybody isn't your customer right. and you and and you're maximizing your single season to be able to say listen I know what I want and so I'm not just taking any 
Larry Co or, uh, Larry Moe or Curly coming across my, my 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 path and say, oh, maybe there's a future. We'd be like, no, not in alignment. Nope, yep. not in alignment because yep. I have a clear vision of clear who vision. I am. So you got me crunk. Yep. These people need to sign up for this course yeah, because I'm telling you, I get so many people, yep. male and females, yep. that DM me that says, I'm single. I'm lonely. I say, if you're lonely while you're single, that means you're not maximizing your single season. Because I'm so busy doing a lot of stuff. And I know it's times where you still want somebody to cuddle with. Heck, I had that moment for the last two months. I had that moment last night. Shoot, I had that moment, shoot, every every <laughs> Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the last two months. Uh, I'd be sitting there like, I'm very, I, I, I need somebody to cuddle with. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 love, I love that female energy around me. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I just, it's just, it's. And the last thing you want to do is get to your wife and she said, well, how come you weren't working on this when you were single? Well, because <laughs> I was depressed and I was looking for you to cuddle with. You get with her, you come to her time, I'm finna start living my dream as a rapper. You know what I'm saying? She like, why you do that? What? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, now you're 52 years old, talking about, man, I really want to be a come a rapper. And she's like, oh my God. Why didn't you do this in your 20s or 30s? Absolutely. Because bro. you wasn't maximizing your single season. And here's the thing, man. I think, and that really goes so spiritual. I think there are a lot of things. There are things in my life that I have not received yet that God is ready to give me because I haven't really stepped up to the plate yet in certain areas. And I'm working on that. And I think that. There are a lot of things within single people. The reason why you haven't gotten that pay raise, that promotion, that that man hasn't found you, or whatever that thing is that God is giving you, is because you're not really showing God you can steward this single season correctly. And so, this oh, hey, oh, hey, hold on, on oh, you saying people have to have an accountability? Absolutely. You you saying that they have to have an accountability to what they're supposed to shepherd in this season that absolutely. they have? Absolutely. People don't people don't like accountability, to Ao. They don't. And it, let me be real with you. I don't like the way it feels. Shoot, I don't either. You know what I'm saying? And when I see the phone call come in at 10 o'clock at night from my, you know, accountability people, I'm like, ooh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> and I got to pick up the phone and be like, yo, what you doing? Hey, man, what was that? I tell them, no, son, no. And you know what, though? Man, I'm telling you, I, I am a better man today because I'm willing to set my pride aside and to be checked. There it is. Um, and um, I think... For, for like my course, I'm going to be doing that. And and I'm not doing it from a, this is why you're not married. I'm not doing it from a perspective of, because listen, this course, I'm not talking about how to how to get out of debt. Uh, I'm not teaching you how to get a man or woman because I don't have a man or woman. Now, I have the skills and the tools necessarily to teach you how to get out of debt and build wealth, clearly. But here's what I've learned. I can teach you how to get out of debt. I can teach you how to um, build wealth. But if I don't really show you the, how to build the foundation first, you're going to go right back. And this course, man, for eight weeks, bro, listen. It's an eight-week course. It, it's an eight-week course, very, very affordable, and they're going to get my cell phone number. They're going to get um, eight weeks with myself, and, and I'm bringing on some other big names. Um, we're going to go live, and we're just going to really dive in and answer questions and serve people and really help them steward and maximize this season correctly. We're, we're writing visions. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of stuff in this course, man. And did I say it's very, very, I don't want to say the price, but I'm telling you, man. I mean, you already told me the price. It's, it's very affordable. It's, it's very like, affordable. it's. I'm like, okay. Yeah, like, I know you're going to, I know the next one you're going to go up. I just, oh, I just know. It's yeah. All, oh, I'm going up. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Cause I, I was like, Ooh. you know. But I want to introduce something new to single people and make it affordable. Yeah. And there's no fluff, man. I mean, each video is maybe like 10 minutes long, but that the, the assignment and and the the working on yourself part is where it really gets to. So what would be the biggest takeaway when people if someone came to you after taking your course and said this mm -hmm. what would be the biggest thing that they could say that the I just changed the caliber of my future because I may I am now capable of making better decisions. There it is. From these these eight pillars. Um and that's what's important because the caliber of our future is determined and will be determined by the caliber of decisions we make today. Well, I know you shared it with your mentor. What did what, what your mentor say about it? Oh, he said, man, this is, this is, he's actually a little disappointed that I'm not charging more. I know. I mean, most people would be like that. Yeah. That's why I said I know it's going to go up in oh, the yeah, future yeah. or whatever. He was like, this is, this is definitely a you know a thousand dollar two thousand dollar course because they're getting direct access to me. So like I'm, I'm it's no fluff. You're going to get my personal email. 
Um, you're gonna get, um, you know, my personal. Why, 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 why do that? I don't understand well, that. The thing is, man, I think a lot of people get into this course world and they're just selling to make money. Me, my motto is this: if I can influence and impact a lot of lives, I'll be rewarded with income. So I'm not chasing income. I'm chasing if I can influence you, if I can impact you, if I can help you change the narrative of your future by serving people, then the reward is green. The there reward it is. is income. And um, I've, I've chased the money in the past. And I wasn't operating in character. I was chasing currency. So now I'm leading with character. That will produce currency. Preach on it. That's a great way to end this. How do people, I'm going to drop a link in the description. Yeah. Uh, gosh, I got, I'm a... I got an assignment. I got. I got to go do the course myself now. Hey man, come join us. I got to do the course because I love that. I love anything that helps me grow. Because I'm telling you, I've been divorced before, and there's nothing more painful than going through a divorce. So I like to soak in as much wisdom and knowledge to in this season of singleness, so that I can maximize it, so that I can become a better husband in the future, uh, and just a better individual altogether. Yeah, yeah. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? It's like just, just. Come on, like it's. I, I love investing in myself. Uh, but people can follow you on social media on your Instagram. What's your Instagram? Man, at Anthony O'Neill. At Anthony O'Neill. Um, I really enjoy talking to you, brother, because I like when people keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Like yes, you don't care about making nobody upset, uh, rustling the little feathers or whatever. You like, hey, I'm gonna ruffle some feathers. That's just what it is. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's like. That's where growth comes from. I like being around people. Uh, they say they say iron sharpens iron. That's what the Bible says. So that friction is what produces uh, production. Yeah. yeah so, so keep doing what you're doing. Hey, listen, hey yo, I've enjoyed having you on the podcast, man. You showed up, and uh, so the summation is: you believe that you cannot have romance without finance. You can like someone, but true romance needs finance. And you heard it from the money man himself. Thank y'all for watching the Dear Future Wifey podcast. <laughs> Ladarian thrusted suddenly into child protective services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted? Yep, you guessed it. Slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? 
Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm Latarius R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. I am so excited that I got a chance to chop it up with my boy Ayo. Um, I love when I talk to kings, just to hear brothers take on life and love and relationships. And uh, Anthony being someone who is a... Uh, um, expert in finances uh love to hear his take on how that would matriculate into a relationship and uh it's quite interesting you know quite interesting his take on things uh but here's my favorite part of the podcast where i speak to my future wifey dear future wifey your generosity and care for others astounds me money doesn't make you you make it your humble beginnings have given you a deep compassion for those less fortunate, and you truly understand your assignment. The Lord crafted and fashioned your heart to join perfectly with mine. God molded us from the clay of the earth to represent his sacrificial love for the world. Until we take our last breath, we will live to display God's love. We will positively represent Christianity. We will encourage people to tap into their greater selves and live for Christ. We will disciple believers we will make the name of jesus great throughout the world unapologetically i can't wait until we team up in love your future hubby thank you for listening to the dear future wifey podcast remember be lit live intentionally and transparently and don't stop loving Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.